Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. I'm on my way to working around the uh, IF amplifier stage, the 6SK72 in this area today. So I've done the output tube, I've done the detector tube, where I've just kind of examined and worked on these stages as we're working our way back. Um, so a couple things before I get going here. The one has nothing to do with these radios, it has to do with this. So this is the board, this is the power supply board out of my son's television. I think quite a few videos ago I flashed this on the screen. I'm poking around with this, I found a number of blown parts. This is one here. I think that's a Zener diode, I'm not sure. That's blown, that's blown, that's blown and the fuse which has been removed is blown out of here. So uh, I tried to get the parts. I, I couldn't identify them properly. In the end, I found an entire board for sale here uh, from a Canadian uh, in British Columbia. So I bought that. So the board was delivered uh, yesterday. I plugged it in the TV. Presto, TV works. So that's the end of that story. Number two. Um, Yesterday, after yesterday's video, I was in here a little later in the afternoon and I removed these plates from the top of the radio. There's one here, one here. Uh, just to get a closer, closer look uh, what's under here and to get access to this tube base here, which is kind of hidden by this plate. What I discovered was these capacitors here, which are in parallel, these two are in parallel. These two are replacing one. The one they're replacing, well, it's not there. Where is it? It's way up in behind here. It's, it's way up in there. You can kind of see the red, the red color here on it. Well, that, that's quite a distance to move a capacitor. You really got to ask yourself, if you can install this capacitor here, where it's easy, why would you install it there, way back under here, where it's difficult? There must be a reason for it being up here. I don't know. I don't know for sure. So that's kind of a, a curious thing, but boy, if I hadn't taken this plate off, I don't think I would have ever seen this capacitor up here. Nor And how did they get them here? From here, there's a wire that runs from this terminal. This red wire runs all the way up to a terminal to which the capacitors soldered over here. So they just simply, and in the other end of the capacitor is just going to the chassis. So all they've done is move the capacitor from here down to here. These end, this this combination capacitor, one end grounded, the other end at the other end of the red wire. But I'm thinking a little bit about, wow, maybe that's not the best move. Uh, a capacitor to ground is usually draining something out of something, like draining um, signals you don't want on the AVC line, draining them out to the chassis. Um, you drain them at the other end of the wire, then those uh, um, uh, currents, if you like, are traveling, could be traveling on the red wire now. Whereas with the capacitors up here, it could be draining them out before they get to the red wire. You kind of follow what I'm saying? That makes the red wire either an antenna for radiating or an antenna for picking up. Any of that true? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds great to me though. So today we want to work on the uh, the IF amplifier tube. Let's take a little peek at the diagram here. What do we got happening here? Um, there's a 0.02 capacitor here. There's a 0.02 here. Maybe uh, Let's see, this is the tube here, so maybe this, maybe this. Yeah, this guy's actually hooked up way up here. Man, I should have changed this out much earlier. I missed it. So he's hooked up to the uh, to the output tube here. Oh, wow, okay, so who's that guy? Uh, that's the grid. 0.04 Oh. 0.04 on the grid going to the tone control. 
point, point oh one, there's a point zero zero four, yeah, point zero zero four here. Yeah, top of the tone. Over to the uh, grid here. So the tone control kind of bleeds down the treble out of the signal just as you're heading to the grid of the output tube. So the tone control appeared to work fine. So this is probably okay and a bit of a leak on that. Probably probably not causing a problem. There's another one down here. 0.01. That's going to be this guy here, I think. Yeah, so off the tone control coming down. Point oh one written right there. So I really should change out these two capacitors. Even though they don't seem to be causing much trouble. But let's get rid of them. So uh, same thing over here. Uh, this guy's brother turned out not to be in good shape, so we'll change him out. Well, I wouldn't expect any performance variation in the radio. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> so you listen to me talk but not see me do anything, so I'm going to change those four capacitors. Okay, so I've replaced the four capacitors, two in each radio. Here they are here, two from here, two from there. Now let's get these uh, capacitors a test on the good old capacitor tester. So we'll start with uh, not my radio. First one is going to be a point zero zero four. My guess is this is going to test pretty good. Just kind of break through the wax that's run up on these wires here. Okay, I think that's connected. Twenty-five volts. Everybody, watch the eye. Look at, oh, a leaky, leaky, leaky capacitor for sure. So much for what <laughs> I, I like making these predictions, but uh, my, my predictions are uh, crap. Let's try another one. Statistically, it can be shown that the opinion of experts in any topic medical experts, science experts, political experts, people who call themselves experts, who give predictions, stock market predictors, all those guys. I think I can feel something loose inside this thing. I'm not sure. Uh, all those guys, when looked at statistically, are just as likely to be correct as anybody else, including all of us. So you're an expert in everything and you don't even know it. All you gotta do is uh, put on a shirt and tie, hold a briefcase, look serious, and say what you think's gonna happen next. It's as valid as anybody else's comment, apparently. Here we go. Yeah, so that's just about as bad as the last one. That's only 25 volts of pressure on these. And they're kind of leaking like six. Okay, now the other radio. The other radio has, has this one. Does that say Hunts under there? I don't know. No, I don't. British made. I think I think that says Hunts under there. But they've gone and covered it with here. Look, look. Sorry about that. But they've covered it with another stamp. What? What? To try to hide hide the fact that it's a. <laughs> I don't know. These are known for being bad. Mr. Hunt got a terrible reputation with his capacitors. But, uh, molded, molded Hunt's capacitors. Oops. Okay, ready on this one? Well, I think my guess would be it's going to leak. Now, this is from the other radio, though. So let's see what happens with the other radio. Oh, look at that. Hundred and twenty, hundred and hundred and fifty volts. Okay, not quite open all the way. Two fifty probably won't open. No, it still opens a little bit. 
So the other radio, this is my radio, appears to be in slightly better condition, at least based on one lone capacitor. Let's try another one here. This is the disguised Hunts capacitor. Twenty-five to start. Uh, it didn't come open all the way. One fifty won't open, so leaky, leaky. But uh, so sometimes I kind of wonder if, if if I could buy one of these brand new today, if I could go back in time and get one of these right out of the factory and put it on this tester, would it show a little leakage or would it show absolutely no leakage? 500 working volts, 1500 test. Yeah, we should put 1500 volts on this guy. See what he does. So, story there is all those capacitors were leaky. Uh, is that going to impact on the operation of the radio? It's in the tone control. Okay, so I'm in another one of these, uh, gee, I don't know what to do now situations. And so to explain that a little bit, uh, I've spent quite a bit of time now relating the schematic here to the components. And I've been driven nuts, driven nuts by this resistor right here. So let's just go over what it is I've concluded here. So if we look at the schematic and we count one, two, three, four, five over, we get the cathode, the cathode connected directly to B minus or the chassis direct and then off of that chassis connection we could or, or somewhere in here we would find this capacitor 0.02 or this capacitor 0.02 so I've identified the, these two but the important thing is this cathode solidly grounded so look on the radio now follow this one we count one two three four five we arrive at this post now this is supposed to be solidly grounded what I really find is there's a black wire tying this terminal to this terminal from this terminal there's this big capacitor going to ground okay. and this terminal rather than be solidly grounded is grounded through this resistor now if you figure out well how big is this resistor body and dot body is orange end is green dot is black so you get 350 350 I've already measured this let's measure it again just to be doubly sure 350 ohms on a cathode is a cathode resistor is a biasing resistor um, but does not appear on the schematic the other radio is identical. It has this exact same resistor in here. Okay, so this one reads around 400, not 350. And this one here, it's a little harder to get at, reads 530. Okay, so 530 is quite a ways from 350. Yeah, try too much bias on this too. Whether that would affect the performance of the radio is debatable again. Um, the larger the cathode resistor, the greater the biasing of the tube, the less current flows through it. So, you know, what harm can come to it from that? So look down here again schematic and the resistor is right in here so you have a cathode cathode resistor so now this capacitor it's hard to see on your on your video I know but this capacitor on the schematic is grounded out at one end right to the chassis but now there's a resistor here so would that throw this off well, I don't think the resistor is here by accident. And I think this was all done by design engineers and that just the schematic is an older version than the model we've got here, I think. 
So this capacitor is really placed <laughs> kinda between the cathode and the grid. So the fact that it's floating a little higher now I don't think it matters. In fact I think if this were connected to ground it would probably not be as good as the way it is. Uh, there's no bypass on this capacitor it's uh, our resistor. Ta -da -da. That's not really true because when I look on the radio here I see uh, here's the, uh, the resistor, the ground black wire tying to this terminal and then we have this capacitor to ground off of this terminal and this is what is this one two three third terminal okay so look here count one two three so three again is shown solidly grounded but but it's not it's it's connected this. So it's also got this resistor in there. What is that? SU. Screen. Must be the screen. SU. Um, now you don't ground the screen. No, wait a minute. Uh, well, I don't know. Quick, quick, get the book. Get the book. Everybody to the book. 6SK7. 6SK7. Wow. Almost opened it up right to the right page here. So we're talking about 1, 2, 3 says SU. What is 3? 1, 2, 3 is. Oh, SU. Suppressor, of course. Suppressor grounded. That makes sense. And suppressor. Uh, grounded above the cathode resistor makes sense I think you want the suppressor and cathode same I guess uh, so that's okay um, so what other weirdness so so then off of this off of this point is a capacitor going to ground that's this uh, this is another additional piece of, looks like there probably is a bypass that would be this guy here. Okay, uh, what is he for capacitance? Point 0.1. So at point 0.1, yeah, I don't think there's any point 0.1s on this diagram anywhere. So that's what they've done. They've then put another capacitor across here. We'll have to pretend it's there. A point 0.1 across here. So the AVC is developed right in this area here. Here it is coming out through a 2 meg resistor. Arriving here. And it can travel up around here and get to there. Of course, this schematic. This, this, yeah, this schematic may, may be different. It may, may be different how the radio is actually wired. So the ABC also comes along, goes through another resistor, right on to here. So if 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 uh, this is still maintained, they're still maintaining a DC bias voltage into this tube. I should be able to put. I should be able to read between pin eight on this tube and pin. One, two, pin four on this tube, I should read this resistance. <laughs> right, eight and four. Eight, and, what's the resistance between eight and four? Eight and four. That's a good question. Pin eight on the six SA. That's easy to get to. What did we expect it to be? 2 meg. 2 meg. So we'll put that on 20. Okay, pin number 8 up here. Pin number 4 here. 
one, two, three, this pin here. <laughs> two makes. So what this is telling us is they maintain the ABC connection to the uh, IF amplifier tube, which is totally normal. Normally you control the gain of these two front end tubes, or two earlier stage tubes. So that's what's going on. All they've done is add in some fixed bias to, to, to jack up the uh, bias on the 6SK7. What does it say in the tube manual about all this stuff? Sometimes there's some interesting comments in here. Because of the remote cutoff characteristic, these types are able to handle large signal voltages without cross-modulation or modulation distortion, often using receivers with ADC. Type 6 principally for renewal purposes. Oh, GT. Okay. Uh, heater, capacitances, maximum ratings. Oh, my gosh, there's a whole story here. Uh, but that, that uh, control bit here we are control grid bias variation will be found effective in changing the volume of the receiver in order to obtain adequate volume control an available grid bias voltage of approximately 50 volts will be required what the exact value will depend upon circuit design and operating conditions this voltage may be obtained depending upon the receiver requirements from a potentiometer across the fixed supply voltage from a variable cathode bias resistor from the ABC system or from a combination of these methods. Why do you say a variable cathode bias resistor? What the heck are they talking about there? And they go on about uh, grid number two here. Uh, well, so we have a combination of uh, cathode bias resistor and AVC voltage. Grid number three, the suppressor grid may be connected directly to the cathode or it may be made negative with respect to the cathode. For the latter condition, the grid number three voltage that came from a potentiometer or bleeder circuit. Okay. Okay, so everything's normal here, assuming the voltages are normal, but these two resistors are out of whack. So maybe, maybe the way to go with this is uh, renew the capacitors related to the 6K, 6SK7 tube and then turn the radio on, test voltages and stuff like that and then consider changing this resistor and any others that seem to be implicated in the, in the situation. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, the next issue is what about these relocated capacitors? Should I put them back up where they where they were originally. So why are they? Why is it, not they, why it, is it really tucked up in here? So, you know, this is the more sensitive tube to a large degree, the 6SA7. And this big honker is hooked up to pin number 8, which is the screen grid. The screen grid. You know, it seems to me that, that this just isn't appropriate. This is going to allow this red wire to act as an antenna, transmit or receive antenna, all the way up to here. I, I think this is done on purpose. They put that capacitor there on purpose. So I'm going to relocate these up in there somehow, some way. Because all that has to do is go from a pin to ground. There's a ground spot right here. You know what? There, there's no. There's no. Uh, there's no. I mean, the original capacitor, if it was in here and they replaced it here, then there should be a ground point. Like like this capacitor is hooked up to this whack of a ground thing. Well, okay, so I'm looking at it here. There is a little tidbit of wire sticking out of it. So I'm pretty sure that originally it was up here. They moved it down there. I'm moving them up. That's the end of that. Let's get busy and get it done. I'll do it off camera again.
people I'm talking a lot. I don't normally do that. Oh, okay, wait a minute. There may be a little more to the story here. The size of the capacitor that's here is supposed to be a 0.02. You know, that's what a 0.02 looks like, a modern 0.02. What are these great big things doing here? So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I got this whole thing figured out wrong. So first of all, are they definitely in parallel? No question they're in parallel. This terminal is just a ground terminal. Let's just remove them. They're coming out. What are they? Let's take them right out. Point oh two eight. Doesn't that freeze you up? I'm frozen. Eight at a hundred and fifty. What are we looking at here? So maybe this is to augment the uh, main power supply somehow. On to this point. Well, what you put an eight and a two. You know, now, now there's some sense to doing this. In that uh, these electrolytic capacitors, which I'm pretty sure this is. They don't do well at high frequency, so sometimes you put a little guy like this across them to, to get rid of the high frequency issue that might be in the circuit. But that doesn't explain. Curiouser and curiouser it is getting. So when I look at this resistor, you can see that in the camera. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Brown green orange 15k 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 okay when i look at the same resistor over here it's a brown black orange 10k 10k 15k that's not a small difference i haven't even measured these to see what they really are so when I look on the schematic, I'll hunt around, it's that one, 10K, 10K, but it's 15 over here. So it's another case of, uh, gee, I just don't have a 10K resistor, how about I use a 15? I would say. Just read across it and see what we get. 16. I'll read across here. This, you know, what well, I should always do two radios at a time from now on. Hey, we're getting up 13. So probably this resistor has gone high. <laughs> that means even though it's supposed to be 10 it's running closer to a 15. Now both these radios have the wrong value in accordance with the schematic. Now am I absolutely sure about this? That is really the guy coming off the screen connection 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pins in. I'll just be absolutely sure. One, two, three, four, five, six pins in. There it is. Okay, so what am I going to do with these guys? I got to change these guys. 10K high wattage resistors. <laughs> I 
Didn't I say something about doing the resistors after doing the capacitors? Yes, I did. So let's stick with the plan. So I recognize this problem now. I'll just leave it there. I'm aware of it. And I'll carry on with installing capacitors somewhere. <laughs> I'll install some size of capacitors somewhere between these parts here. Okay, let's test a couple of these capacitors. Three, actually. So these first two, first one, comes from not my radio. Okay, 25 volts. It's a great looking. It looks great. Let's see. Not quite all the way. 150 volts. coming open. Okay. The story is told. Looks great, but now this one is a electrolytic here. Okay, so now my tester is set for electrolytic capacitors. This is the test. I won't do it any higher. Don't really care. Hmm. Let's see if we can measure the capacitance of this. Just giving it a moment to, to fully discharge. Okay. Point 0.1 to 50. Point 0.1 to 50. This measures about 8. Huh. How do you like that? That's exactly what it says on it. Still not sure if I should replace it. Okay, now the other single uh, Sangamo capacitor, 0.05. A point 0.05 where it should have been a point 0.02. Probably didn't make any difference. Well, let's see. Okay, 25 volts. One fifty. Not gonna open. So we're all tired. Tired capacitors, no surprise. Enough to bring down the operation of the radio? Well, I mean, I'm sure it's not helpful. In some circumstances, yes. A little leak onto a grid or something like that, yes. But in other circumstances, no. A little leak doesn't really amount to anything. Okay, that's great though. So I've got a ton of stuff uh, replaced in these radios now. Uh, I did the uh, tone capacitor took the capacitor that was here that was installed up here on this radio put it up here so you can see the two of them what have I got left here now um, this guy here and another guy here and that's really it um, I think it'd be interesting to test these radios at this point concerned. I tested them in the uh, in the radios. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the test was valid. Good show. I'm ready to go here. Okay. Uh, more tornado warnings around. Oop. How do we do that? Uh, not, not close to me right now, but later tonight I could have another night of tornado warnings here. Down, down. 
AM band. Power on. Like it so. Everything seems fine, so we'll go up to. What are we going up to? 100, about 117 volts, 116 volts. Hmm. It's a distinct hum in this one. Okay, let's just tune and see what we can get here. There appears to be nothing. Can't get anything. This one, the volume's gone through the dumper. Hmm. It's almost full volume now. Hmm. You know what? Maybe it's. Maybe I just got to turn to a quiet spot here. Five ninety. I sped it up.
like an antenna on it. Short wave. Or all artifacts coming from the other radio there. Nothing. Okay, that's the answer there. Nothing. What about over here? Well, okay, that's a little bit, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a little bit disappointing, but uh, it shouldn't be. First of all, it's a terrible time to be doing short wave, terrible time of the day, terrible time of the sunspot solar cycle, so um, terrible. So not to be too disappointed about that. Um, that's, uh, so still more to do, a couple more capacitors. I can't imagine the performance is going to come up if I do those two capacitors, but I'll do them. Then it's alignment time, and we'll see what we can really get these uh, two radios doing. So uh, I'm pretty hopeful. Thanks a lot for, for watching.